plastic on deck. Nice. That is, uh, well done. Maybe a little bit more than I expected, so that's uh, okay. that's okay. okay cool. so, yeah. That's quite some plastic, guys. I hope we'll break the 200 tons in this one. We will. Pretty confident. We will. Yeah. I give you my promise. So. I am Alicia Malik from behalf of Zero Vision. More or less, everybody knows that what is the reason behind this tremendous hit. Not only it's because of the continuous weather changing due to the, the ice melting in frigid zone. But somehow, somewhere, it is the mistake of us. Us means each and every people who are doing pollution, who are behind the cutting trees, and everything they are doing to harm our environment. Day by day, the temperature is increasing. One reason is due to the deforestation, that is the cutting the trees. Another reason is the most important one due to the ice melting, which is also connected with that deforestation which is connected with the pollution and as we all know that pollution means not only a single one pollution means air water land and noise everything is polluted by us only if you ever think quietly and silently, you will get to know that in every day, in everyday life of yours, you are polluting somehow the environment. Whether you were not garbaging the garbage in the correct places or you are draining the plastics in the dens, which is the most important reason behind this pollution that is the plastic from childhood still now every time whenever we read the chapter of the pollution we get to know that plastic is the most harmful thing for our environment which not only cause the harm to our environment but also it causes harm to our health but still, we are ignoring everything and we are doing continuously pollution. If this continues, nothing will going to stop our death, the destroyer of the earth. Plastic home. How the great Pacific garbage patch is now thriving with the life. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch containing over 1.8 trillion pieces of plastic in an ecological disaster. A new study however shows that this giant collection of plastic trash has also become home of thousands of marine life, creating a new kind of ecosystem. One would not think of a mass of plastic being a hospitable environment for living organism. However, the scientists have found that it is now home to communities of coastal creatures, including 
tiny crabs and anemones living thousands of miles from their original home on plastic debris in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. These creatures see anemones, white bryzoa, hydroid sprouting like orange feathers, shrimp like amphipods, Japanese oysters, and mussels don't belong on a chunk of plastic, but they have all somehow learned to survive in the open sea clinging to the plastic. We take a deep dive into what exactly in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. What scientists found and what is the impact of new findings? Now the maybe the question will be, what is this Great Pacific Garbage Patch? Before we go deeper into the new study, let's understand what is this mass of plastic. As it suggests, the name it is a big, big, big soupy swirl of garbage ranging from microscopic pieces of plastic to larger objects such as fishing nets and bars. also known as the Pacific Trash Vortex. It spans waters from the west coast of North America to Japan. Reef Conservation International, a volunteer organization committed to saving our oceans, says the best way of visualizing the patch is to imagine a big soup floating in the ocean like oil does. Conversionalist an expert state that it is about 1.6 million square kilometer in size. To put that in perspective, it is thrice the size of France. It is also said to weigh 7 million tons. A National Geographic report states that while oxygen geographers and climatologists predicted the existence of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. It was a racing boat captain by the name of Charles Murray who actually discovered the trash vortex. While there are estimates of the patch containing 1.8 trillion pieces of plastic, no one knows just how much debris makes up the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. That because not all the plastic is visible and it is just too large to travel. Experts state that 80% of the plastic in the patch comes from the land, base sources, while the remaining comes from boats and other marine sources. However, this percentage vary. 2008 study found the synthetic fishing nets made up nearly half of the mass of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Ocean across the world is full of garbage ranging from microscopic pieces of plastic to larger objects such as fishing nets and bias. The cause of the patch is the world's high and unnecessary plastic use and more so the methods of disposing these plastics. The International Union for Conservation of Nature has stated that at least 14 million tons of plastic end up in the ocean every year. This plastic pollution is a big threat to marine species. They either ingest it or entangle by it, which causes severe injuries and death. A new study carried out by the Lindsay Haram and her term from the Symposonian Environmental Research Center SERC found that coastal plants and animals have found a new way to survive in the open sea by colonizing plastic pollution. In the study published in the Nature Ecology Evolution Journal that revealed that dozens of species of coastal invertebrate organisms have been able to survive and reproduce on the plastic patch. Haram, the lead on the study, was quoted as saying, this is creating opportunities for the coastal species biogeography to greatly expand beyond what we previously thought was 
possible. Coastal aggregating An enormous found on black floating plastic fragment collected in the garbage patch. Quite a large percentage of the diversity that we found were coastal species. And now the native plagiaric open ocean species that we were largely expecting to find Haram said. The team also found that these species were not just this temporarily but were also reproducing and thriving there. They found tiny baby anemones budding of anemones and female cross the shields carrying little broods of eggs. The study is a revelation and indeed a surprise. This means the plastic mass being inhospitable to coast Still dwelling species has now become a home to them. Sabine Rich, a marine biologist with the Universidad Católica del Norte in Chile, who has studied life on ocean garbage in South Pacific, was quoted telling NPR, Beyond the surprise, I think the implications could be huge. She added that this could increase the risk of the species finding new places to take hold and become invasive. Moreover, she shared that the idea that coastal species are able to make a go of it. Out at the sea, if they just have something durable to anchor onto is a little revolution. In scientists thinking, it's a big scary. The scientist said that this is the proof that nature is just finding a way to survive in turbulent times. Our results demonstrate that the ocean environment and floating plastic habitat are clearly hospitable to coastal species, they concluded. Our today's topic is the Pacific Garbage Patch. Many of you don't know what is the specific garbage patch. In this video, we are going to give you details. But at first, let me give you some information. The Pacific garbage patch is the patch where a lot of polluted or plastics get at the same place. The scientists found the pollution the patch created is only made up of plastics, nets and everything. Which is alarming the aquatic life of the Pacific Ocean. Not only the aquatic life but also the life of the people. And don't think that it is happening in the Pacific Ocean that means we are safe. Actually not. Just keep calm, watch our video and you will realize that what is what we are doing every day in our life. Let us go through the video. Whoa. 